At People's Capital Group, we help you invest in real estate. Build your wealth by owning professionally managed apartment buildings in the northern New Jersey market. We want to show you how owning real estate is attainable, even for the busy professionals that don't have the time or experience investing in real estate. Now, we only work with select people who are serious about building wealth. So find out if you qualify at peoplescapitalgroup.com. All right, welcome back to the Passive Cash Flow Podcast, where we help people invest in real estate. Now, some episodes include interesting guests that span dozens of different types of industries. Other episodes offer analysis of popular topics that pertain to people seeking to learn how to build passive wealth in real estate. So listen in and enjoy our off-the-cuff podcast made to entertain, educate, and help you learn how to create passive wealth in real estate. So today we have an interesting topic. I'm going to talk about how to invest $30,000 for growth. Okay, $30,000 is our minimum investment amount here at People's Capital Group. It's a pretty common amount that people get started investing in any type of large asset class. You want to make sure you're diversifying that investment. But let's talk about how to invest $30,000 for growth today. We're going to go over a number of factors first that are going to influence how you're going to invest. Now, maybe you inherited this money, maybe it was uh, poured into blood, sweat, and tears to save up this money, or maybe you have millions of dollars and you're looking to put an additional $30,000 to work in one way or another. So you want to determine all these factors and that's going to influence how you invest this $30,000 for growth. Now, first of all, the stage in your life, right? How old are you? Do you have a family and kids? Or how close to retirement are you? So what stage in life are you at? That really determines how you're gonna invest this $30,000. And I'll go over about a dozen different options and your stage in life will really determine what's the best fit for your investment goals. Secondly, your risk tolerance. And this ties in with your age and your stage in life as well. If you're younger, you're gonna have more risk tolerance. Be looking for kind of higher reward, more aggressive investment opportunities with a little more risk tolerance. Quite frankly, if you lose a little bit of money or you learn some things along the way, well, you don't have a big family or a big mortgage yet. Maybe you're getting to that point, so you have a higher risk tolerance. Maybe you do have a family, maybe you do have a mortgage, maybe you're a little bit older, more established in life, and you wanna make sure that you know that money's around when you're gonna need it. So you're gonna have a different investment strategy there with a lower risk tolerance, maybe a little lower reward, but you may wanna have more of a liquid investment depending on your reserves and how much, what's the likelihood of you needing access to that capital in the future. So investing $30,000 in real estate can be a great option to build that cash investment for growth. Real estate's been known to build some of the biggest wealth for investors and our investors earn around 10 to 15% annualized cash on cash returns by investing passively in real estate. Real estate has appreciation. Ideally, the value of real estate goes up with the inflation where it is right now. Real estate values are growing very nicely. Real estate offers cash flow, although in North Jersey here, we don't earn a whole lot of cash flow, but over time we do. You can invest in all different types of states and all different types of real estate opportunities that offer really strong cash flow. That's a nice thing to enjoy. And then of course you have uh, equity growth that works in with appreciation there. You know, equity is the amount of money between the what the property's worth and what is owed on the property. And that's your equity there, and that's gonna grow over time as the property appreciates, as the property earns more cash flow as well. Maybe it's renovated and leased up for a larger amount. That's gonna allow for more equity growth. And then finally, we have tax benefits, right? So real estate offers tax depreciation, and that allows you to write off your cash flow on the real estate. And then if you pay yourself through the appreciation, through your equity growth, and you pay yourself through the refinance of real estate as we pay our investors, that's a way to pay yourself without getting hit with capital gains tax. So essentially a way of taking cash off the table, putting it into your pocket, and not having to pay tax on those funds you're paying yourself. That's called a cash out refinance. You can learn more about that in many other episodes we've done. And that's how we pay our investors primarily on our apartment building repositions. So that brings me to real estate crowdfunding. So there's crowdfunding websites, there's different real estate syndications. You can invest in a real estate syndicate like People's Capital Group here where we do all the work for you. We find mismanaged apartment buildings here in North Jersey. We could buy for a good price. We'll crowdfund the capital, we'll pool together, maybe say 20 investors that are gonna invest some 
30,000, others half a million dollars, right? The more you invest, the more you own on the property. But you can get started with as little as $30,000 and you could also invest even less in different crowdfunding sites, but a real estate syndication generally is a good, strong option. You wanna make sure you're investing with a syndicate where your goals align and they're experienced operators and their investors reinvest as well over time. But real estate crowdfunding can be a great way to get in on a larger property or diversify over a number of properties or a number of markets. And there's lots of different ways to do it. You can learn more at People's Capital Group about our real estate syndication. You can also fix up your home. So look into putting the capital into your home. If you have $30,000, you're looking to invest for growth. Well, maybe you have a good home in a good market and you say, hey, if I redo my kitchen and my bathroom and uh, redo my patio, you know what, my home's gonna be worth uh, $80,000 more. So this $30,000 investment, if I put it into my home in the right way and hire the right contractors, well, my property value can grow by $80,000, right? So that's a good investment, a $30,000 investment to grow $80,000 worth of wealth. Well, that's a net gain of $50,000. So look at possibly fixing up your home, renovating it to grow that wealth in your real estate that you live in. But remember, the home you live in is, is really a cost. So you wanna make sure you don't refinance too much of that, of course and now you have a high mortgage payment. Then there's house hacking. So house hacking is a little bit different, okay? House hacking is when you live in one of the units and rent out the other. So ideally you could do this with a duplex or a triplex or even a four unit. And it's really a great way to build wealth and, and live for free as well. I did this for a number of years with my wife. We had a two family home. We lived in the big unit. We rented out the smaller unit. Um, it allowed me to cover my mortgage payment and essentially cut my housing costs from like $2,000 a month to like $500 a month. So if I had a three or a four unit, I probably would have lived for free, but just having that smaller second unit allowed me to do house hacking and I paid down my mortgage for a little bit. I put some money into the property as well. I actually refinanced my investment out and I lived there for a very affordable cost and for a while and I still own the property today. So that's owning a multifamily unit, living in one unit, renting out the others, having that income from the other units pay off your mortgage and other property uh, costs, and that's called house hacking. Over time, your tenants are gonna pay down that mortgage, you're gonna save money not having all those housing costs and allow you to either move out to a bigger property and do it again with another multifamily property and rent out that unit you were living in or sell the property and trade up to a bigger property. That's called house hacking, great way to build wealth and real estate. And you can start that with $30,000 if you're buying a smaller property. Real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs. Real estate investment trusts are generally stocks backed by real estate. This is a great way to invest in real estate uh, and keeping your money very liquid. So the nice thing about REITs is it's a stock backed by real estate. So you can invest today and take the money back out tomorrow where say if you're house hacking, you're gonna buy a piece of real estate, you're gonna be invested for like a three to five year period in that piece of real estate. And you have to go and sell it, that can take three to six months. So owning real estate's not a very liquid investment, right? You can't really put your money in or get it out very quickly. And that's one of the challenges of real estate, of course, and that's why real estate syndications exist to make that a little easier. But a real estate investment trust is a, is a stock backed by real estate. So the cool thing about this is you can put your money in and take it out in a matter of minutes. Now, the negative thing about that is it becomes very volatile then. So, for example, when the COVID hit, uh, certain REITs dropped by 80%. Now, the value of the real estate didn't drop by 80%. In reality, it's just the stock dropped by 80%. So, obviously, the volatility of the stock market is going to affect any publicly traded REIT. So, you want to recognize that you're really actually investing in the stock market backed by real estate. So, it is very volatile but REITs can produce nice dividends around six to 8%. They can grow in value as well, but they are more volatile than owning actual real estate. Invest $30,000 in banks. Let's talk about a safer way to invest $30,000, okay? Those first options I talked about, which was investing in real estate through a real estate syndication, that's a passive option, real estate crowdfunding, another passive option, fixing up your home, that's an active option, house hacking, that's more of an active option for an active investor. Uh, these are all ways to uh, build your real estate investments, build your wealth in real estate. Of course, real estate investment trusts, of course, REITs are a great way to do that as well. But let's say you wanna be more conservative and make sure the money is definitely gonna be there. It's not gonna be in a REIT and drop in value. It's not gonna be in a real estate syndication and be tied up for three to five years. You wanna have that money available. You may need to live on that money, okay? You may need to pay your mortgage with that money. So you might wanna look into a high yield savings account. 
that's a good option to make a two to three percent uh, interest rate on, on your investment. That's not a great return on investment. You, you're not really going to beat inflation with that, but it is a good way to make sure the capital is there if you need to. Um, and get the capital back quickly. You can also look into stable coins. That's a good way to earn a higher interest rate, but a little bit more of a risky option, but also a very liquid option where you can pull your money out very quickly. Stable coins can earn a 9, 12, 20% return. The more risky the stable coin, the better the return. But be aware, if you're investing in the wrong stable coin, like we just saw with Luna and uh, Terra, that we saw that actual stable coin go down to zero. So they all lost all their money. So a stable coin is not the same as a high yield savings account. And because of that, it has a much larger return. Then you have money market funds. Okay, another type of uh, bank account investment here. They offer higher interest rates than traditional savings accounts, but they require a minimum investment uh, that's generally a little bit larger, but $30,000 could get you there. So during the term of your investment, the value of your account must not drop below a certain level. And um, it, it's best to find money market accounts that's FDIC insured to make sure you don't risk losing that entire investment, as we saw in the, in the crypto in, uh, industry with certain uh, stable coins that were not FDIC insured. <clears throat> so investing $30,000 in the stock market. Obviously, the stock market is a great place to build your wealth. We do suggest a 30 to 50% of your capital be invested in the stock market and 30 to 50% of your capital be invested in professionally managed high demand real estate. Of course, stocks are a great way to put that $30,000 to work. Uh, you know, you can invest in mutual funds, or short term stocks, long term stocks. Generally, a long term strategy is going to be a better option there. And a mutual fund is going to allow you to invest in a number of different uh, entities and a number of different um, industries as well. So you might want to look into mutual funds as well there. Uh, bonds, okay, bonds could be a safer investment option. Now, most bonds aren't going to keep up with their, where inflation is right now, which is about six to eight percent. Bonds pay out more around two to three percent. So you're going to have trouble keeping up with inflation there. You have U.S. government bonds. These bonds are backed by the federal government. They focus on capital preservation rather than growth. So again, if you want to just kind of park your cash somewhere, make sure it's not going to lose money. Uh, uh, this could be a good option. Municipal bonds, towns and city issue municipal bonds. They have marginally higher risk than government bonds. See, because a a, a, a a city or a state can file bankruptcy and then you're out of luck with that bond. So they do have higher risk than government bonds, right? The US government, God forbid, isn't gonna file bankruptcy. If they did, we'd have bigger problems. Uh, but you know the, the small town and city bonds uh, have higher risk, but offer better returns than government bonds. And then corporate bonds, because corporations issue bonds as well. They come again with higher risk than others, but they generate the highest returns here. So you might want to look into corporate bonds. If you're a little more comfortable with a little bit more risk and you want a little greater return than government bonds or municipal bonds. Also ETFs and mutual funds. So I talked about mutual funds. ETFs are another option there. E, uh, I'm sorry, EFTs are directly traded in the stock market. Um, and e ETFs are directly stated in, in the stock market there. So a mutual fund can pool money or a e uh, ETF could be a good way to uh, invest uh, more conservatively in the stock market. And they usually generate around seven to eight percent annualized returns and have lower management fees as well. So here's some more tips to grow your $30,000 investment. You want to clear your high interest debt. Of course, depending on your specific situation, if you have high credit card debt, that's bad debt, or even student loan debt, that could be bad debt. You want to clear that debt off your books, okay? Your mortgage is generally low interest debt backed by a solid asset. So as long as you're not over leveraged with your home, meaning you owe more, prop, more money to the bank than your home is worth, but as long as you're not over leveraged with your home, you, you probably don't need to pay off your, uh, your mortgage, but paying off high interest debt like credit card debt could be a good way to go there as well. Of course, diversify your investment portfolio. And diversify, diversify, diversify. I say that in all my podcasts. The bottom line is you want to be diversified over a number of asset classes. You want to be realistic with how much time you actually have to put into these investments. If you're really busy working a full-time job and a family and you don't have time to do all the, all the requirements of being an active landlord, then look into a real estate syndication. If you're too, too busy to be picking the right stocks, look into a mutual fund. But you also want to be consistent, right? Invest consistently, uh, follow the right strategies, invest over time, and diversify over a number of asset classes. So be consistent, diversify, but also never stop learning. 
YouTube, books, magazines, the internet, it's filled with information. It's all free usually as well. Certain courses are free also. All of our content at People's Capital Group is free. I do a weekly podcast, monthly webinars, weekly blog posts, uh, events at our office uh, multiple times a year as well. So take advantage of all that free content. Go to peoplescapitalgroup.com, digest that content, enjoy it. Check out all the other free content on the internet there. Just make sure you're getting it from a reputable source, of course. And at the end of the day, you wanna invest that $30,000 wisely, depending on your situation, of course. That'll determine if you wanna be an active or a passive investor, pay off bad debt or invest in a real estate syndication. So figure out what your investment goals are, determine the best pathway forward to invest that $30,000 for growth and you may want to have it liquid or you may want to have it more for a long-term growth strategy so depending on your financial situation you can figure out the best strategy for you listening to our other podcasts are going to help you guide that strategy as well so we've come out with a weekly podcast here on the passive cash flow podcast you can get more of our episodes and free content at peoplescapitalgroup.com thank you so much for listening about how to invest thirty thousand dollars for growth hopefully you decide to invest that capital at people's capital group we could build our wealth together for the future thanks have a great day